But if inflation expectations fall below our 2% objective, interest rates would decline in tandem. In turn, we would have less scope to cut interest rates to boost employment during an economic downturn, further diminishing our capacity to stabilize the economy through cutting interest rates. We have seen this adverse dynamic play out in other major economies around the world and have learned that once it sets in, it can be very difficult to overcome. We want to do what we can to prevent such a dynamic from happening here. What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here to do some technical analysis on the S&P 500. We're going to be looking at the daily time frame and the 30-minute time frame, following up on yesterday's video, mapping out support and resistance. I went ahead and played that intro of Jerome Powell talking today at Jackson Hole. And let me sum it up for you. It's okay to let inflation run hot. We're going to print more money and we're targeting unemployment. The market had already anticipated this news that was to come. This chart right here is a chart of the central bank's balance sheets. And it's a race to see who could come into first place the fastest. Right now, we're taking a fourth place lead right here at the blue line, far behind the SNB and BOJ, the Bank of Japan. Now, on a more serious note, it's very hard to take what Jerome Powell says as truth. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you just go back to 2012, Jerome Powell seemed to be in a completely different human being. This right here is the October 2012 transcript of the FOMC meeting. Mr. Powell kicks it off with a little bit of laughter, which surprisingly enough, every single time he spoke, there was a little bit of laughter. Kind of cool guy. But he was talking about some concerns around the purchases that were taking place, similar to what's going on right now. But this was at a much smaller level comparatively. So he goes on to say, I have concerns about more purchases. As others pointed out, the dealer community is now assuming close to $4 trillion balance sheet in purchases through the first quarter of 2014. Hmm, much stronger reaction than I anticipated. I'm uncomfortable with it for a couple of reasons. Look at the reasons. There was three that he mentioned. The first one, why stop at $4 trillion? Well, he didn't stop at $4 trillion. The market, stock market, which they talk about throughout this document, in most cases will cheer us for doing more. It will never be enough for the stock market. He's right. It will never be enough for the stock market. And our models will always tell us that we're helping the economy. However, I will probably always feel that those benefits are over estimated. And he goes on to saying that we'll be able to tell ourselves that the market function is not impaired and that inflation expectations are under control. But what is to stop us other than much faster economic growth, which is probably not in our power to produce? The second thing he had mentioned, which is very relevant to today, is that he believes that they are encouraging more risk taking. And that should give us pause, meaning to step back from that policy. He said that it looks like we're blowing a fixed income duration bubble right across the credit spectrum that would result in big losses when rates come up down the road. And then his third concern was around tapering the balance sheet. Exiting is the words that he used from a near $4 trillion balance sheet. We got a set of principles from 2011 that have been doing some work since then, but it just seems to me that we seem to be way too confident that an exit can be managed smoothly. There you have it, folks. That's Jerome Powell talking about his concerns in 2012, completely disregarded here in 2020. But hey, what do I know? I am no economist. I am here to look at the technicals and the chart. And we have been talking about this megaphone pattern and this blow off top, this short squeeze, whatever you want to call it, taking place in the S&P 500. Now, today's price action closed at another record high at $3,484.56. Since, however, if we zoom in, today's price action is a doji candle that was followed previously of a nice big upwards move. So this could very well be the start of an 
evening star. So we're going to have to watch this carefully if we have a gap down tomorrow and more and close on a big red candle. That is known as a candlestick reversal pattern known as I said the evening star. So we're going to want to watch that and monitor that going into tomorrow. Today looked like it was a very strong day which we'll get into on the 30 minute time frame and we'll talk about those trade plans that I talked about on yesterday's video and how they played out. Overall, I'm keeping this rising wedge pattern even though we broke above it. I can technically move this up and it just be a channel, but as you can see, when it broke above it, it came back today and tested it perfectly and then closed up a little bit higher. So I'm just gonna be monitoring that until further notice. The RSI indicator on the daily time frame is definitely overbought. It is continuing to push higher and higher there. Let me go ahead and bring in a couple other indicators that we've been watching. The first indicator is the McClellan oscillator. And what this is telling us while it's below zero is there's a negative divergence here in the breadth of the market. The next indicator is the VAPI, which is the volume accumulation percentage indicator. And it still shows a negative divergence. If we start seeing this close below zero and the price continues to move up, that would be even more of a warning sign to me. Another indicator that I don't typically show, but this is updated. This is total market cap over GDP. Many people call this the Buffett indicator or the Warren Buffett indicator. It's to basically determine when things are overvalued. And right now it is at 184, which means it's at its historic high for being overvalued. So what I'm trying to say is right now is the best time to buy stocks. I'm only kidding. Clearly right now does not seem like a time you want to just jump in when we're seeing this market breadth indicator. We're seeing divergences in the RSI and it's an overbought territory. I think I said oversold again. I always do that. We're seeing the negative divergence in the volume accumulation percentage indicator. The Warren Buffett indicator is completely in overvalued territory. The next chart that I want to pull up here is the VIX. The VIX here is the volatility index for the S&P 500. We've been monitoring it. I've been saying, hey, it looks like it wants to come close to this gap and then potentially move higher. My target is around 40 to 45 range. And we had some pretty big action today. As you can see right here, it did press up pretty high, almost like around 12% um, up on the market high when it was up there and then close 5% above. So a big day in volatility could be an early sign that more is to come. Let's go hop back to the S&P 500 to the 30 minute time frame. map out some support and resistance for tomorrow's trading day. All right, we are here on the 30 minute time frame. Let me go ahead and talk about all these lines and stuff that are going on, break that down for you. This blue vertical line right here represents where the day started. So every candle thereafter represents 30 minutes of data. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that just to clear up the screen. And then these red and green lines, those are areas of resistance and support that we mapped out yesterday. And we're gonna be updating those today. Now this purple line going across the screen, that was from the daily time frame, the upper part of the trend line of a rising wedge pattern. And then this blue line down here represents the 50 period moving average. So what took place today? Well, we had a gap up, back tested our resistance. Once resistance is broken, it then becomes a level of support. We had multiple times where it tried to break through it. So we said that was an area of resistance, came back and back tested it. That was the first trade plan we discussed saying, hey, if we get a gap above and we get the pullback, it could represent a good bounce point to the upside. So if you caught that, nice work right there. However, trouble started happening midway through the day where we saw it break down all the way to our second level of support and that trend line. So we said basically we put the support right here and it was right around the trend line. If we got a pullback, that could represent another good area to get in on a bounce or a pullback. So if you did capture that, congratulations. We saw the move then from there all the way to the upside. Two real good trades that would have played out. And then here at the last 30 minutes, it really started hammering down. And this is a little bit of a cause for concern because we haven't seen this type of selling take place at the end of a trading day for pretty much the month of August. So let's go ahead and map out new areas of support and resistance to keep an eye on. And clearly the level of resistance that stands right out is 3,500. That's just a big round number. And clearly many times throughout the day, the price struggled to get above it only once or twice poking above there. As far as support goes, I'm going to keep 
this support here at 3480 now it could technically come a little bit lower because you saw the pullback on today's candle bounce from that point and then you had these two right here actually as well come down to pull there so that would make sense as an area of support but it's kind of a zone so it could be 3480 down to 3478 just to make it simple we're going to round it off and call it 3480 and if you do play a bounce there just have a stop loss in case it doesn't bounce from that specific point. The next area is really not gonna be too much different than before, 3468, and clearly we had it pulled down here and tap into it quite a few times right here, so just a little bit lower. And when we broke above it here, it acted as some support as well. So I'm just moving it down to 3468. Once again, you can call it 3470. Just for rounding purposes, it makes it easy. So let's just put it at 3470 for a level of support. So not much different than yesterday other than our area of resistance. Keep an eye on where the market opens up tomorrow because where the market opens up tomorrow can quickly determine if this market's gonna continue to move down or we're gonna continue to see some more upwards movement. So if the evening star were to really play out, what we should see tomorrow is a gap down and push lower. Now there's some areas of support here that you can play potential bounces on. However, this last 30 minute candle has me just a little afraid to create any realistic trade plan. So the real only one that I am really kind of considering at this particular time, as far as buy the dip, sell the rip, is keeping an eye on this 50 period moving average on the 30 minute time frame. If the price action were to come down there or even gap down and move lower, the 50 period moving average, depending on where it's at, will act as a level of support. It has done that historically as well. So what would be nice is to capture, you know, a trade just above the 50 period moving average, have a stop loss in place, and maybe we can see a little bit bounce up into this area up in here. Remember, when the price action breaks levels of support, it becomes a resistance. So if it does come down here, and it bounces, you might potentially see it get rejected. Just a couple of things to consider, but that right there would probably be the only trade plan that I'm really looking at from a long perspective. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, head over there. I'm figuring out money, as you can see with the little icon right above me. I typically throw out a couple of trade plans here and there on the SPY in smaller time frames, such as the five minute. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you on today's S&P 500 technical analysis update. See you tomorrow.